Hi, I'm Susan Henking. I'm the president of Shimer College. Banned Books Weeks is something that's important to me. It's been important since I was a child going to a library till today as a college president. It's important because, in fact, I exert power, but I also have to learn from others, including that young man who's actually videoing me and trying to get me to laugh. So I hope you'll enjoy the remarks I've prepared, and I hope, too, that I'll learn from you. Colored people don't like Little Black Sambo. Burn it. White people don't feel so good about Uncle Tom's Cabin? Burn it. Someone's written a book about tobacco and lung cancer? The cigarette people are weeping? Burn it. Those words come from Fahrenheit 451, a 1953 book written by Ray Bradbury. Discomfort, he said. Burn it. I'm not in favor of banning books. I'm not in favor of burning books. I'm not in favor of trigger warnings, per se, since I can rarely guess what texts will profoundly disturb me, nor do I think that I can figure out what texts will profoundly disturb others. More importantly, I don't trust those who would place trigger warnings or ban books to do so on the basis that I would respect or need. I'm in favor of providing an intellectually rich and responsible context within which to discuss difficult, challenging, and troubling texts. I'm in favor of including in those discussions a wide range of persons and a wide range of questions. I'm in favor of balancing the difficulty of such conversations and such readings with intellectual generosity and kindness. At the core is the question of how we best provide a rich context for debate and thorough debate at that. In order to ensure that odious or repulsive immoral views expressed by some do not simply get submerged. Ignorance, and certainly the willful ignorance imposed on others through banning books, is not bliss. Whether we're speaking of sex or violence, or racism or sexism, our morality emerges, in my view, from the openness of debate, not the closed power-mongering of censorship. The challenge for me, and I must admit it is a serious one, is how one lives with this position. The challenge does not lie in the many books that others ban and I believe are of crucial importance. The Communist Manifesto, Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye or Beloved, The Origin of Species, The Well of Loneliness, but the, rather the challenge lies with the books and views that I am most tempted to ban. The pornography of violence or sexual abuse, the intolerance represented by such texts as The Bell Curve or voices like those of Leviticus. I want to censor textbooks that juxtapose intelligent design with evolutionary theory as though they're equivalent, or place Holocaust deniers alongside legitimate history. I do not want to read words that deny my humanity, that frighten me, and leave me with nightmares. Refusing to censor requires trust in the context within which each of us encounters those voices. And that means a responsible, well-educated public. We do not have such a context, but we aspire to have one now and into the future, a context that can distinguish between our fear of the other and repugnant positions that dehumanize, that can build democracy through inclusion rather than exclusion, that is educated for discernment rather than for substitution of one's own certainties for those of others, that's educated, as I say, for discernment rather than the refusal to look at parts of our humanity including those aspects of self and others that we find demoralizing at best and horrifying at worst. Martha Nussbaum, in the context of discussing Andrea Dworkin, made very clear that the First Amendment is about restricted speech. She wrote, That amendment never covered all speech because bribery, threats, extortionate offers, misleading advertising, perjury, and unlicensed medical advice are all unprotected. Close quote. The challenge is, of course, which speech we restrict and who exerts the power to limit that speech. For me, Banned Book Weeks is an intervention in both my own internal debate and our public practices, a time to read what we find difficult and help ensure that others do as well, including those books that we are actually shocked to discover have been banned. In my case, that includes Where's Waldo and the American Heritage Dictionary. Really, folks? It's not a time to congratulate ourselves, but a time to push ourselves toward discomfort and where we can to remind ourselves and others of what they're missing. Like the best reading, Banned Booked Weeks is a communal activity, asking us not only to read, but to think together. It is, I hope, a step along the way to the well-educated public, 
a public we could trust. So in addition to my opening quote, I want to offer a second quotation from Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, a book written, as I said, in 1953 that is itself about banned books and has itself been banned. My earlier quote points us to the notion of direct, intentional censorship, burning books, discomfort, burn it. Here are a few other words from Bradbury's 451, though, that point us in another direction entirely. And I quote, I am Plato's Republic, Mr. Simmons is Marcus. I want you to meet Jonathan Swift, the author of that evil political book, Gulliver's Travels. This other fellow is Charles Darwin. This one is Schopenhauer. This other one is Eisenhower, sorry, is not Eisenhower, is Einstein. And this one here at my elbow is Mr. Albert Schweitzer, a very kind philosopher indeed. Here we all are, Aristophanes, Mahatma Gandhi, Gautama Buddha, Confucius, Thomas Love Peacock, Thomas Jefferson, and Mr. Lincoln, if you please. We are also Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If we turn today's critical eye toward that quotation, we see through the affirmative retention of some texts a different sort of censorship, what I might call a censorship of ignorance or omission. We see this by asking, who is missing from Bradbury's words in his imagined future of saving books through their memorization? All too many of us. Bradbury omits the voices of women and what he knew at the time as Negroes, for example, and may not even really know it. The search for that well-educated public for a world beyond banned books steers not merely between our resistance to and our temptation to ban or censor, or perhaps even burn, but between the deliberate censorship of active banning or burning and that which comes from omission of voices from the fruitful debate that we need. It requires the practices of freedom, beginning with the requirement of persuasive speech and careful listening. It moves beyond the memorization of Fahrenheit 451 to the critique and care of liberal education. So thanks a lot for listening, and thanks for listening to my argument for liberal education, the importance of debate, discussion, and doing it together. So for those of you at Scheimer, Vandercook, and IIT, I hope you'll join us at Galvin Library across the week for events around banned books. Thursday, October 1st at 6.30 p.m. at the Galvin, there'll be a banned book readout. So bring along your favorite banned, banned book and join us in reading them. For those of you who don't come from our little communities, please find another event across Chicago, across the nation, and across the planet. Join us in a conversation that will help us not only avoid our temptation to ban books, but also our temptation to forget that some people are already always excluded from the conversation. And besides which, really, I'm dying to see somebody read aloud from Where's Waldo?